We are backstage at Tin Man Jam. My name is Nick Russo, and it's my pleasure to welcome back to Houston, David Nail. Welcome in. What up? What up? So you said you just got in town just a little bit, uh, a little bit ago. I guess you haven't had anything to eat yet. I had Chick Fil A at the airport. <laughs> um, we had found out. I, I don't exactly remember why we were here. We may have been, you know, um, connecting uh, to another airport, but. One of my my guys informed me he had flown internationally, and he said down by the international wing at Southwest there was a, a new Chick Fil A. So we, from the moment the the plane pulled up to the gate, we debated whether or not we had enough time to go swing Chick Fil A, not knowing really what our lunch options were. So um, it's funny there's a Chick Fil A, but you know we live in an area where there are Chick Fil A's. You'd thought we'd like rush to the closest Whataburger, but. We were like a couple of school kids. Well, you know, Chick-fil-A always has some of the fastest service ever also. Yeah, and they're always so happy. And they didn't pay us to say this, by the way. And it's <laughs> al it's always like such a mixture of ages. You know, the one by my house will have like a bunch of high school kids and they'll have some 70-year-old people. So it's like an all in between. And somehow they, you know, are cohesive. They work all together and everybody just seems like they're having the greatest day they've ever had. And they always say my pleasure. You I never that? noticed that. Yeah, but that, that's their thing. There's a guy at the one I go to by my house, and um, I can't understand a word he says. Like, he repeats everything back to me, and I have absolutely no clue. He's so country, um, and he talks so fast and so loud that I just – I never exactly know what he says, and I just want to, like, talk to the manager and be like, who thought it would be a good idea to have him, like, talking to the people that drive through it because – there can't be anybody in the world that ever like hears what he says and goes, yep, that's exactly right. <laughs> they just go on faith. Now, uh, so I got to play the Opry not too long ago. Uh, can you describe that experience? Well, you know, there's, you know, anytime you play the Opry, it's, it's, um, you know, it's a nerve wracking experience. You know, I always say this every time I've ever played it, but you know, I keep waiting for the time that I play it and uh, I walk out there and I'm somewhat composed, but, um, you can kind of suppress those nerves and, that that anxiousness all day long but and really right up until the moment you walk out there but as soon as you walk out there it's just something about being at the opera now the, this last most recent time was at the Ryman auditorium at christmas time they kind of move moved downtown to the Ryman, and so you add into the equation the mother church of country music Ryman auditorium and it just it just goes up double so um it's an honor and it, it honestly it honestly is such an honor when you go out there you just um, you feel so much pride and, and, um, you know, you especially as many times we've done it, the fact they keep asking us. Um, but from a standpoint of if you, if you a nervous guy like myself, it can be a miserable experience too, because you just get so worked up and then it's over and you're like, why was I so worked up? You know, it's, it's actually sometimes hard to enjoy because you're so nervous and I'm up there talking and telling stories. I have no clue what in the world I'm saying. How many people does it hold? I don't know. You know, the Ryman probably it's kind of an 2000 setting, plus. Um, and I have no clue about the grand, the, the, the building out by Opry Mills. It's, it's quite a bit bigger. I'm sure. Now, um, the twins turn a year old this month. Is that right? Next week, next Monday. Now, uh, how would you sum up your first year as a father? Well, I'm still around. Um, and they're still around. So no one's made any like extreme extremely bad decisions that cost anybody any body parts or have there been um, any injuries yet you know my son has been um and the only reason i say this because obviously i have two so i have i get to see an example of the opposite of whatever they're doing in some cases and um he's had about six or seven ear ear infections and you know it take it took us a while to kind of figure out um you know, that that was, in fact, an ear infection. You know, sometimes you just – the one thing I've learned is when you have babies, everybody – everything's blames on – you blame everything on teething. You know, the kid, like, stall, you know, stumbles and bumps his head, and somehow it was teething was the, <laughs> was the reason. So um, you kind of just – you know, you, you call everything teething, you assume it is, and then you find out, you know, that they're they're dealing with an ear infection and, and have been for a while. So um, – so there were some moments where, you know, we looked at the receipt and saw, you know, if we were if we were still eligible to return him, um, <laughs> but we we had kept him too terrible. We had, we'd kept him too long, and so we're stuck with him. But um, it's the most amazing thing in the world, you know, especially 
everybody always says, you know, oh, at six months it's so good, or at eight months it starts to get really good. And, you know, I really feel like the last couple of months their personalities have started to really show, and, and they're carrying on back and forth with each other. And at first it was my girl giving him a hard time. Now he's kind of stepped up to the plate and kind of, you know, going back and forth with her. So um, do you see a lot of your, your – you start to see your own – characteristics emerge in them yeah my boy's a lot like me man he's a serious sensitive kid and um i realized that probably about seven eight months uh into it and not a day goes by i'll hold him and i'll just be like son man be just relax have fun don't worry you know don't sweat the small stuff like please don't be like me because um you know, I, I'm, I can have fun with the best of them, but for the most part, I feel like I'm always worried about the next thing. And uh, it's always really hard for me to kind of stay in the moment and enjoy the moment because I'm always kind of paranoid about what's coming around the corner. So um, it's weird. And he looks a little like me, too. Yep. So it's, it's kind of bizarre. It's like many, many you, you know. For sure. Yeah, there's nothing like seeing him make a facial expression that's yours. And you're like, wow, that, that's me. Now, um, you wrote or helped write nearly every song on Fighter. How could you say uh, having children changed the way you make music or thought about your career? You know, I mean, most of this record, um, with the exception of, uh, you know, Babies, which is a song that I wrote about them that was kind of a late addition to the record, um, was done. And, and, and the majority of the co-writing was done before they were born. And, and so, it really, I kind of started to develop a bit of a complex about this whole changing thing because everybody kept asking me so much about changing and I really didn't feel that different so I started to feel like that I was a terrible dad because I had not changed like all these people had asked me about um, but I think the one thing that I, I, I've realized that's different more than anything is just there's certain songs that maybe meant one thing two years ago or triggered certain emotions two years ago that suddenly now different lines appeal to me in different ways. Um, and I think that you're always kind of, you know, I always tell people, you know, I, I, I don't, there's no guarantee my kids will ever think anything I've done is cool. But there are certain songs, obviously, that are extremely personal to you and about them that, that hopefully they gravitate towards just because they they're, they're obviously know the people involved. And then once they're old enough to really feel the depth of emotion and understand some of the things you're singing about, then they'll really be able to relate and say, wow, you know, man, Dad did that for me. And that's going to got to be exactly. really special. Now, Fighters available wherever you buy your music. Uh, David Nell, he's part of our amazing 10-man jam lineup tonight. David, thanks for your time. Um, it's going to be a, a great show tonight. Thanks for being a part of it. I appreciate it. And I do have to say this. I've done a lot of these, none to this extent. And it just blows my mind when I look at this roster. Like, I don't know exactly what everybody has to do to get into this show, but whatever it is, it's, it's worth it. Because this, this roster is insane. Um, I'm just blown away. It's, it's going to be – I'm fired up with who I'm playing with, the people that are playing – uh, before me and obviously the people afterwards so I'm, I'm very flattered to be here and i don't know what y'all did obviously y'all y'all some powerful folks because y'all got y'all got one heck of a roster tonight and so hope i guarantee you if you're gonna be here it's it's gonna be legendary well we can't wait to see you on stage thanks again